Hi, this is Joe Jasper, and I'm going to explore uh, masking in Topaz Studio. So the first thing uh, I want to do is an analogy uh, to for those of you who don't understand masks at all, and that's that uh, if we had a white wall and wanted to paint it, let's say, blue, if I put masking tape on the white wall, that's impervious to the paint and paint over the entire wall. The paint will cover everything, the wall and the masking tape. But the masking tape is going to preserve the white underneath so that if I pull that masking tape off, the white underneath that masking tape will be still there and the blue will show everywhere else. So that's uh, the basic origins of the word mask, I guess. Um, so here we have a white wall. I've duplicated it because remember whenever you make changes, adjustments of any kind or apply any of these uh, presets, it's going to change this highlighted uh, layer here So or image. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is say, hey, I'm going to grab uh, my paint bucket, bring it in the room, and right now I'm going to uh, not change the color yet, but I'm going to open the mask. This little plus sign is going to open a mask for us in a color overlay. Uh, and in image layers or texture layers, it's going to appear different. It's going to have an icon of your image there. So uh, we're going to grab a brush to uh, imitate our it, our masking tape. We're going to make it black and we're going to make it very hard uh, by bringing the softness all the way down to zero. And I'm going to lay down a couple of stripes of masking tape. So here I, if I look over at my mask, I've laid some black masking tape on this white wall. So think of the black as masking tape. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to grab my blue paint bucket and roll it on the wall. Now, everywhere that there was masking tape that I've peeled off now later in our, our analogy, white from the original white wall shows through. Everywhere that there was not masking tape, the blue, the blue paint has stuck to the wall. So the mantra is black conceals and it's concealing whatever is happening in this layer and allowing the original layer to show through. So black conceals, white reveals. So we also can do uh, partial transparency which means now I've got a gray brush and if I bring that gray brush across it replaces of course on our mask uh, the black with the gray, and instead of having 100% blue, we have 50%, uh, let's say. Uh, and this is not changing any of the blending modes, but uh, we can choose different amounts of black uh, versus white. So the uh, blacker the stripe is, blacker the mask is, the less of the new layer is going to show, the dark, the lighter the mask is, the more of the new layer shows through. Okay, so black conceals, white reveals. We can also adjust our mask and say uh, increase the contrast and you can see that uh, something that was almost white, as I increase the contrast, becomes 100% white. And this becomes important later on when you're working with luminosity masks. So learn how to uh, play with those things. And the density slider too does different things. Okay, so let's move on. Now I've got a flower. I chose this flower because it has contrast of color, contrast of highlights, uh, and in this case, the contrast of color is what I want to work with. Again, I'm going to duplicate 
things. I'm going to drag the image onto itself and uh, I'm going to open the mask and you can see now it looks like a little icon picture of the same picture and I'm going to choose a color and sample the yellow. And you can see already it's done a pretty good job of isolating the yellow from the blue. So maybe I want to replace that blue sky. So uh, I'm going to now do exactly what I said, uh, play with some of the adjustments. So it's sampled our color correctly. You can see it's yellow. But I may want to play with the range and say, gee, I want to make sure that it's only sampling the flower. And as I do that, I can even get rid of most of this green here by getting tight with it. But you can see it's also starting to affect how pure my flower mask is. So this is pretty good if you wanted to put this flower on a different background. Uh, you can just come in and change uh, the density of this a little later. Let's do that. Let's uh, uh, hold on to this mask the way it is here and I'm going to go to the little hamburger menu and say copy mask and then maybe uh, we'll get something like a color adjustment layer and choose a red background say OK put it up a hundred percent click on the mask icon click on the hamburger menu of the mask layer and say paste mask and you can see now everywhere uh, that uh, is white is allowing the new redness to show through everywhere that's black is not letting it through everywhere that's gray is letting through a little bit so let's see if we can improve on that a little bit by adjusting the contrast of the mask and yes indeed we can now we have only a very little bit to fix here by picking up a brush picking up a black brush and painting in all this. Now the edges may not be perfect, uh, so one of the things I can do is take this expand mask and slide it one way or the other till it looks better like that. And now I've isolated my flower very quickly to be able to apply uh, a substitute background perhaps or texture that gets up very close very quickly. Now if you wanted to um, blend the uh, texture partially on this flower, uh, you can just take that mask uh, and make it less visible by going into the adjustment and saying decrease the density of it perhaps like that and that you see how the redness is showing through so texture would do the same thing okay so uh, don't forget to be able to play with those tools to get exactly what you want so I've got this flower I'm also going to show you uh, that there's other mask tools and maybe we'll choose a different different image for luminosity but uh, let's get another mask going here and this time we're going to choose, uh, let's choose the gradient. And you can see that with the uh, gradient that came up automatically, we already have an edge aware gradient mask. But let's start that gradient over and uh, we'll bring it down maybe to the horizon. Maybe uh, bring this point down in so that we get a little better uh, like that. And maybe we wanted to replace the sky with a cloudy sky or something. Uh, but just for the sake of this, I'm going to again click on adjustment, click on contrast, and make sure that we have a pretty hard trend um, respect for the flower versus the sky. Perhaps play with the density. And again, I'll come up with some wacky color for the background. and change its opacity come up to this mask again I forgot to uh, copy the mask but let's 
say copy the mask come down to our color density the uh, color overlay layer hamburger menu paste mask and then we're going to invert the mask and there you go boom bang boom gradient mask did a great a great job uh, again, if there's a little bit of bleeding through, as we can see, there's some gray areas on the mask. Come down to the Adjust button and perhaps increase the density, increase the contrast, and now it looks more pure. Uh, expand the mask, bring the edges in a little bit tighter, looks even better. So there you go with uh, using a gradient mask. Gradient's usually best uh, like replacing a sky. So this is a tough one to use a spot mask on, but let's just uh, give a quick shot at it. Probably something with a little uh, less erose edge would, would be better. But I've opened up the image again once again on top of itself. Uh, open a mask, click the spot tool, and it's the same idea as if we try to keep this uh, white, the, the red inside the white as a transitional zone. Uh, make sure our edge aware is turned up. We start to get that flower look and uh, we can start trying to expand it and get hopefully just the flower, but I don't think it's going to work too great with this. Um, but you can see that it's it's starting to do a fairly decent job of of bringing uh, just the flower petals in. Uh, again, not the best subject for <laughs> for for this, but uh, we're getting close. And then we can adjust things like contrast and try to get this to look right. I don't think it's going to do great for a, for the flower though. So uh, that's the spot tool. Probably a better subject to choose would be something that's more round. So let's see if we can get Avalanche Lily to work out for us here with the luminosity mask. Uh, so I'm going to drag the image over itself again. And uh, we're going to create a mask. And this time let's choose luminosity and uh, choose uh, something like that and you can see it's doing a pretty good job of uh, getting black to isolate our flower in kind of the most critical areas so we could play with uh, the luminosity and range a bit and see if we can improve on that to get more of the uh, definition of these things um, But there's another trick we could do, and that's to prepare the image for masking better. Always good to have this duplicate in reserve in case we screw things up too much uh, with what we're trying to do. But you can see that even if we just left things where we started, it's giving us a pretty darn good start on masking our flower. And then we can go back in with brushes and touch it up. And these most difficult areas to mask are already masked for us. Uh, again, we can go into uh, these uh, other sliders and try to uh, get even better. And so that's a pretty good start anyway. But let me show you a little trick. If we backtrack to the point where we just dragged this flower in, we can see that it's got the white areas and the yellow areas that became uh, dark. So what if we went into HSL and see what we can achieve to lighten the inner parts of that flower by bringing the yellow layer up? Well, there's a lot of... <laughs> yellow in this background. It may not work a whole lot for us, but let's give it a try. Um, and same with the greens a little bit that are in the in the flower here. Maybe it's blue. Let's find out what saturation we want. We don't want saturation. We want uh, lightness. 
so the lightness there and um, I don't think bringing the greens down is going to help a whole lot but let's give it a try just a little bit and now uh, if we apply that it becomes its own new layer and uh, what I'm going to do is go back to this one and revert it come to this one as the layer we're going to use for masking click on the mask try that luma again and see if we can get a little better with the flower right um, that's looking a little better so again you can play with the range and the luminosity to try to get exactly what we are looking for bring in adjust the contrast and that's looking better already then we only have little spots to touch up right he, uh, here and all these little uh, glowy things around we can get rid of so uh, let's copy that mask and just uh, to be consistent we'll choose some gaudy color again and bring it all the way up put on our um, mask and hamburger menu paste mask and now we've got our white flower mostly showing through and we can touch that up we can also make adjustments to the mask again and say oh you know I need more contrast in that or more density and it's looking better and then I can grab my brush grab my white brush and just get this touched up how I want edgeware brush to bring the pink out and black brush of an appropriate size to bring flower parts back in but you can see that the tough places like this are already pretty well masked for me once I get this mask touched up the way I want I can always copy it again and use it uh, elsewhere right so let's uh, just get this a little better it doesn't have to be perfect for what I'm going to do next with this to make it a little happier looking instead of the Scotty pink. I'm going to come down and maybe change it to black. And now that's pretty stunning, isn't it? So uh, I think we've run through all of them. So um, Topaz Lab will probably be coming out with uh, more of their official uh, videos about subjects like this but in the meantime here we are in the Topaz community helping each other uh, I hope this helps some of you who are had total confusion about using these things